What's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna take a look at the most powerful build I tested during PTR, which is a chain lightning build that combines Axial Conduit and Fractured Winter Glass. Now there are some significant patch changes that have happened since this footage that will affect the power of this build, which we will discuss in detail right now. I would have loved to bring you guys updated footage on this, but I was not among the select few who were allowed to play in the private test build, even though I really wanted to so I could make more videos for you guys and I reached out to Blizzard, but they just completely ignored me. Since this was the most powerful hybrid build I tested, even though there are some changes, I really wanted to bring you guys the idea before the season starts in case anyone is looking to rip it right off the bat. I will be playing this build as soon as possible during the actual season, probably right after my Elemental Constellation Familiar build, which just got a crazy buff. And if you're interested in that, there is a full build guide linked in the description. I think people in general are overreacting to the changes, just like they always do. Most of the changes appear to be targeted at the pure Lightning Sphere build itself, which was undeniably powerful. However, hybrid builds that use Lightning Sphere more as a tool to complement the kit, rather than being the entire kit top to bottom, will still feel the changes, but not nearly as much as pure Lightning Spear. And if you don't believe me, we're going to talk about all the details in depth right now, but check out Lurkin's recent video discussing how his hybrid Frozen Orb build still feels very powerful playing with all these changes, and I will link that in the description as well. By the way, guys, I'm not saying I agree with this method of target nerfing the best build that a lot of people were enjoying. I think that's dumb, but that appears to be exactly what Blizzard is doing, which again, doesn't surprise me. All right, so don't let the overreactors fool you. We are going to go through exactly what has changed right here. There are three big changes to Lightning Spear, one change to Winter Glass, and some big rune changes. So let's start with Lightning Spear, the Conjuration now having a cap of 12. Every other Conjuration has a hard cap. It was only a matter of time before they included this one. For this build in particular, our total active conjurations will now be 5 familiars, 6 ice blades, and 12 lightning spears, capping us at 23 conjurations total. The new possible total conjurations you can achieve with any build is now 26 if you include hydras, so this build is just 3 below the new cap. You can see from the footage that I occasionally get above 23 conjurations, but only when really spooled up in a big group. Most of the time, I'm averaging around 18 to 20 active conjurations, so the only time we'll be losing any DPS from that change in this footage is when I'm at 24 conjuration mastery stacks or higher. All right, so the second change was the Lightning Spear Temper, which went from chance to cast twice to chance to deal double damage, which now becomes completely useless because basically none of our damage is coming from Lightning Spear itself. I think of the changes, this one will likely have the biggest impact on a build like this because half the time we were casting Lightning Spear before, we were getting three to spawn, and now we will only be getting the original two, so it's going to be a bit harder to get as many Spears out at once. There was also a bug where these extra lightning spells from Unstable Currents, as well as the frozen orbs getting casted from Winter Glass Conjurations, were counting as casts, which procced the new Talrasha effect, the Tam rune, as well as the new Enlightenment Key passive, and all of that has been fixed. So the main change we're likely going to have to make to account for all of that is replacing Unstable Currents with Ice Blades on our cast bar, which we were going to have to do anyways now to get to our six Ice Blades to cover our cooldown gap. And that leads us into the Winter Glass change, which is the one I think everyone is overreacting about. And the only change here is that they switched the Conjuration cooldown affix with the inherent Elemental Resist affix. So your Winter Glass will now look something like this. What this means is we can no longer get a greater affix or masterworking crits on the cooldown reduction. This will most heavily impact builds that were requiring massive amounts of CDR to function, which was mainly the pure Lightning Spear build. In all of my hybrid builds, we were never prioritizing that affix anyways. Our primary focus has always been on Conjuration Mastery for GA and Masterworking. You can see in this footage, I have a very average Winter Glass with a Conjuration cooldown reduction of 0.5. So when this gets moved to an inherent affix, it should be capped at 0.3. So we will definitely be losing a bit of CDR on that. However, the new Evocation passive, which was completely bugged during PTR and didn't work at all, will now be active. So we're going to have 12% increased base CDR on all of our spells, not just our conjurations. In addition to that, switching Ice Blades back to our bar will give us six Ice Blades max instead of three. So we'll be getting double the amount of CDR from Ice Blades that you see in this footage. So with these changes, even though we have to move some stuff around, we're actually gonna have more CDR than we had before, not just on conjurations, but on all of our spells. And the final change we are looking at with Lightning Spear is this adjustment to splintering energy, which seems more of a performance-based change than a functional change. They're basically making it so it's only able to register a hit every fifth of a second for performance reasons, but the damage of any hits that would have occurred during that time are loaded into the next hit. So you will basically see slightly less numbers, but some of those numbers will be much bigger. All right, there was also apparently a secondary intelligence squish that happened, so every single Sorcerer build will be losing some percentage of damage from that, but we can kind of consider that a mute point because it's happening to everything all at the same time. 
and then there were some massive rune changes to basically eliminate all the extra damage multipliers from runes. Of the changes I've discussed, the rune changes will be most impactful for the total damage of this build, since in this footage we were getting 15% multiplicative from Warcry, 25% multiplicative from Berserking, and 30% multiplicative from Petrify. The Berserking and Petrify multipliers have been completely removed, and so now our only damage multiplier available in runes is the original 15% from Warcry. So it went from Enhanced Warcry with Berserking to just regular Warcry. And to be perfectly honest, I'm actually a big fan of this change as I felt like having those be the only two runes with damage multipliers, they were going to be the only ones I ran with every build. Now with these changes, it will at least hopefully encourage more creative uses of the runes and let us do some cool stuff or build more defensives rather than being pigeonholed into the only two runes that give us multiplicative damage. I'll have to experiment with the new runes myself unreleased to figure out what really feels good here now. So if you're looking to run this build, I strongly encourage you to just start messing around with your own runes and see what feels good. If you're not sure what to run and just want more damage, you could still run the Yule Ohm rune word for the 15% for more cry, and then just sock it in intelligence gems rather than a second rune word. All right, so those are the changes that have happened to this build. Hopefully that's enough to sort of convince you that it's still going to be a super fun and powerful build, and this is very high on my list of sword builds to play in Season 6. Like I mentioned earlier, the only build I tested that really came close to this was that new familiar sword build uh, focused around the aspect of Elemental Constellation, and it cracked me up because in the patch notes right under Splintering Energy, uh, you see this buff to the Elemental Daggers, and it's like a 10 to 15x increase, just a massive increase. And people were like assuming it's a typo, but it is apparently not a typo. So we're gonna get a huge buff to those elemental daggers and super excited about that and to see how that looks. Because without that, we were already critting them for like 50 million. So that might actually bump the power of that build above this one. And that's likely going to be the very first sort build I play and really try to hone in right off the bat. And I will likely play this one right after that. If you're interested in familiars or the new aspect of elemental constellation that got the crazy buff, I did a full build guide on that the other week and that is linked in the description. All right, so finally getting into the goods of this build. The core idea here is we're taking a Chain Lightning build with Axial Conduit and trying to max scale the damage through Conjuration Mastery, Splintering Energy, and Winter Glass. Axial Conduit has become one of my favorite uniques and basically turns Chain Lightning into a real spell. Now when you cast Chain Lightning, instead of it having a bounce limit, it will hit enemies three times and then return and orbit you for a bit, just like Ball Lightning. After that, it will shoot out again and hit three more enemies, then return to you again. Whenever a Bolt of Chain Lightning returns to you in this way, it will consume six mana for every active Chain Lightning, which is now indicated by this little number on your hotbar. So the more Lightnings you have active, the more mana it will cost for a single Bolt of that Lightning to return to you. However, when a Bolt of Lightning consumes 66 total mana in this way, it will explode, dealing AoE Lightning damage. Now, if you don't have the mana to cover one of these Bolts returning to you, it will disappear without exploding, resulting in a DPS loss. So the idea with Axial is always trying to consume as much mana as possible without ever going fully oom. And you'll find that you might have to pay attention to this early on, but as you get deeper into endgame with the regen we are getting from Axial combined with Conjuration Mastery, we won't have to worry about mana nearly as much and can sort of just spam Chain Lightning as much as possible. We are combining Axial with Fractured Winter Glass to squeeze the most multiplicative damage possible out of Conjuration Mastery. With a GA on Conjuration Mastery and Triple Masterwork crits, we can get to plus 10 ranks on our amulet and plus 3 ranks from our skill tree, bringing us to a rank 13 Conjuration Mastery. And that equals 13% multiplicative damage, 13% move speed, and 26% increased mana regen for every active Conjuration. What this means for us is if we can consistently achieve our 23 Conjuration cap with this build, we will have an extra 299% multiplicative damage, 299% move speed way above cap, and 598% increased mana regen. Now you can see why we are still using Winter Glass even after the changes. Not a single item, uber, glyph, unique aspect, anything comes even close to a 300% multiplicative damage increase, allowing Winter Glass to hold its spot as the most powerful sorcerer item that exists in the game. For comparison, our next highest multiplicative damage from an item comes from Talrasha's, which is 75%. The Winter Glass multiplier equals four Talrasha's. Let that sink in for a sec. If you're still not convinced, on top of that crazy multiplier, it's constantly shooting frozen orbs everywhere automatically to CC everything, freeze it, and make it all vulnerable, activating all of our bonus damage to freeze and vuln on basically everything around us all the time. So 300% damage multiplier, maxed out move speed, 600% increased mana regen, guaranteed automatic CC and vulnerability, all in one item. And it's not even an Uber. It is still the best item we have by far, guys. 
Now in this footage during the PTR, we were running unstable currents, but we're likely going to have to drop that because after the changes, we're now going to need ice blades on our bar to consistently stay at the six ice blades cap. If you're not aware, unless something unnoted has changed, we can only get three ice blades up total from casting it, and we can get three total from running it as an enchantment, which includes the ones summoned from Winter Glass if you're actually casting Frozen Orb. Because we now have a Lightning Spear cap of 12 and reduced CDR from our Winter Glass, we are going to fully recover that CDR by doubling our amount of Ice Blades. This, combined with the new Evocation passive actually working, will likely result in better cooldown reduction than you see in this footage. And the trade-off for that is we're going to have to either drop the attack speed and extra cast from our ultimate, the mobility of Teleport, or the defensive of Flame Shield. And we actually can't get rid of Flame Shield if we want to fully stack the new Talrashas, which only works off, to, off of casting the different elements, not just dealing damage with them. So another reason to put Ice Blades back on our bar. We also actually really need it to activate Burning from our Familiars for Devouring Blaze. So we either forego Teleport or that extra attack speed and cast from Ult. And I personally have a really hard time playing Sorcerer without Teleport. The added bonus of dropping Unstable Currents is we can now run a different aspect on our boots instead of Orange Herald. I still really like Exploiter's Aspect here for the increased CC and damage in Utility Slot, but I think defensively another cool option could be Aspect of the Firebird, which if you're struggling with getting one shot can be a super useful new aspect to help you live through a lot more of those, because it basically gives you the Flame Shield enchantment for free and that actually works now. In addition to Chain Lightning, our defensives, and now Ice Blades, we will also be running Familiar and Lightning Spear. Even with the changes, Lightning Spear remains our number one button to press on cooldown in order to scale our DPS, with Ice Blades now being right behind it. We're still getting a large portion of our damage to come from Splintering Energy, and even with the cap of 12, we can get double the amount of Lightning Spears out compared to other conjurations. And this is a really good point to sort of pivot into how to actually play this build. Probably the most important thing to keep in mind when playing this build is getting Devouring Blaze active, and you can see I'm doing an absolute terrible job of that in this footage. What we really want to be doing is always engaging with Flame Shield and instantly casting all of our familiar charges right after that. This will give us three to four fire familiars right at the beginning of a fight, which will burn everything and activate the Devouring Blaze multiplier for all the rest of our damage. After that, we want to be spamming Ice Blades and Lightning Spear on cooldown. These are our most important cooldowns to be constantly pressing in order to reach our 23 Conjuration cap, and you'll find that the more you press these buttons, the higher your DPS will scale, not only from Conjuration Mastery and having more splintering energy procs, but also from the increased CDR once Ice Blades are spooled up. Anytime we're not pressing those cooldowns or engaging with Flame Shield, we want to be casting Chain Lightning. Since we're not going to have great attack speed without our ult, we want to try to attack move between each cast, meaning use the downtime at the very end of each cast animation to reposition a bit before you're able to cast another one. With the functionality of Axial Conduit, you'll get a bit of a damage bonus by positioning close with your Chain Lightnings orbiting you, but this is just a small portion of our DPS, so certainly not essential if you need to play from a distance. And that's really it. It's a pretty simple, easy, straightforward build to play. You're getting a lot of automatic damage happening from your Chain Lightning seeking stuff combined with your Lightning Spear seeking stuff and that proccing splintering energy across and all your Conjurations shooting Frozen Orbs doing their crazy thing. The main thing you need to remember when playing it is opening with Familiars after Flame Shield in order to get that Devouring Blaze up, and I kept forgetting that. And then mashing Lightning Spear, Ice Blades, and Familiar basically on cooldown as you constantly blast with Chain Lightning. A curious interaction I've noticed with Familiar is it seems to cast faster if you cast them all at once. Like there's a, a some cooldown to start the actual Familiar cast, but once you've casted it, you can cast the second and third charge like really quick. And so actually dumping all your Familiars as fire every time after you Flame Shield seems like a better way to use it than just constantly pressing it all the time. And after you get your Burning Familiars out, the reason you want to continue to weave it in is it's going to automatically count as a proc toward enlightenment regardless of your previous elements. So it's just going to, we're going to be rotating between all our lightning and ice blades, all our lightning and flame shield. So that's our like element rotation. But now anytime you cast familiar, you'll also get that elemental transition. So we should still have basically 100% uptime on enlightenment. And we also want to always be trying to stay at five familiars along with capping out our six ice blades and our 12 lightning spears. And that's going to put us at our 23 conjurations. All right, guys, that's all I got for this one. I hope it was useful despite not being the most updated footage, and I really do wish I could have provided uh, new footage, but Blizzard did not allow me to do that, and so I'm simply just doing the best I can with what I have. Um, I may drop one more video before season start, but at the very least, expect to see Spiritborn and Sorcerer builds starting to hit around the 8th once we get a chance to finally dive in. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to take care of yourself, and I will see you in Nahantu. Peace.